So this is going to be wrapping form. Let's change this darker. Wrapping form. And I'll put in parentheses vertex form. Um, standard form. And factored form. Of a parabola. And I'll put in parentheses quadratic, quadratic function. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of talk about how each of these forms looks and what you can easily find from each of these forms. So first form I'm going to talk about is graphing form. And again, when I say graphing form, I also mean vertex form. I will go back and forth between saying those. And the equation for vertex form Okay, so for vertex form, vertex form is y equal a times x minus h squared plus k. And again, we call this vertex form because you can identify your vertex. So your vertex is going to be whatever makes this x this parenthesis with the x zero, which is going to be a positive h. And then the plus or the minus here, in this case, it's a plus k, so it's a positive k. That's your vertex. So in graphing form, you can easily identify your vertex. Okay. That's why I call it vertex form, and a lot of people call it vertex form. Okay. The next one I'm going to talk about is standard form. And standard form is y equal ax squared plus bx plus c. That's standard form. That's how we first saw our parabolas at the beginning of the year was in this form. Now, I'm going to ask, what can we identify easily in this form? In this form, the easy thing to spot, if you put zero for your x, these both are going to basically become zeros and you're gonna be left with your c. So the easy thing to find in standard form is your y-intercept, which is gonna be zero comma c. Quick note, notice that this, is an H and a K, and these are a B and a C, they do not represent the same things. So this K is not my Y intercept up here. If I was to put zero in for this X, in this parenthesis, I get a negative H, I'd square it and I get an H squared times A plus K. That whole thing, H squared times A plus K, that would be my Y intercept. This K is the Y coordinate of my vertex, which is not going to be my Y intercept unless it's sitting on the Y axis, which in this case, it probably is not. This depends on what my H is. So I just want you guys to make sure you understand that. Okay, next form. Let's say we have our factored form. Um, I'm just going to put some generic variables in here. 
And I'm going to do this in the sense that maybe we have an A in front of our factors. Okay. Um, so let's say that we have an A outside. We were able to factor our coefficient, uh, Lee coefficient out of everything. Then we're going to have, for example, like an X plus, let's just say D or minus D. Or, and let's say an X plus E. Okay. So in this form, when I have it in factor form, what can I easily identify? So the easiest thing to identify in this case, when it's in a factor form, is your x-intercept. It's what makes this parenthesis zero, which would be negative b, and this parenthesis zero, which would be negative e. So in this case, my x-intercepts are the easy thing to find. And I would have negative D, for example, comma E, whatever makes this zero. Uh, sorry, negative D comma zero, I apologize. And my other x-intercept would be negative E comma zero. So graphing form, you can easily identify your vertex. Standard form, you could easily identify your y-intercept. Factor form, you can easily identify your x-intercepts, okay? Now, the only letter variable besides x and y that is the same in all of them is your a. The a is your stretch in each of them. The a is not a different letter in each of them. It represents the same thing. So um, your a, is equal to the stretch um, in each of the forms. Okay. Now, sometimes in our factored form, our A might be kind of split up between these factors. Sometimes we might have like a 3x plus something and a 2x plus something. But if I factor that three from, from, let's say this, and I factored my two from this, even if it get, ends up giving me fractions, that A would be a six outside. So in this case, I'm having this written where there is no coefficient in front of my X in either of these factors. If there was, I factored it completely out of both of them. And that gave me this A. And in each of these three cases, that A is your stretch. Okay, so I'm gonna go through three examples, one in graphing form, one in standard form, one in vertex and a factor form. And I'm gonna ask us to find three things, vertex, x-intercept, y-intercept in each of them. Okay, so uh, example one. Uh, let's say we have d of x is equal to the quantity x minus 3 squared minus 4. And again, this form would be what I would consider graphing form. Or I'll put in parentheses vertex form. And I'm gonna want us to identify three things each time. So I'm gonna ask us for the vertex. I'm gonna split it into kind of three sections here. I'm gonna ask us for X intercepts and I'm gonna ask us for Y intercept. So right now I want you guys to find the vertex, the X intercepts and the y-intercept of this equation. So the easy thing to find in this is your vertex, okay? And our vertex our vertex is going to be 3 comma negative 4. Okay, that is our easy part of this. Three, because that makes this 
quantity zero, negative four, because of that minus four. Now to find our x-intercepts, what I am going to do to find my x-intercepts, I am going to put zero in for my y, in this case, g of x, and I get an x minus three squared minus four. Now, what some of us did was some of us multiplied out this x minus three squared, which I do want us to know how to do quickly. I'm not gonna do it that way. If you did do that, I'm gonna write it and then I'm gonna erase it. If you did do that, that should have been x squared minus six x plus nine. This is a perfect square. We've been fac practicing factoring perfect square trinomials. This is an x minus three times x minus three. So if, you, if you're gonna multiply this out, kind of the formula, square the first term, multiply it together, and you always get two of them, so you double it. Square a negative three, you get nine, minus four. And then have it be x squared minus six x plus five and go from there. I personally am not gonna do it that way. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm not saying it's wrong if you did, it's wrong if you did not get x squared minus six x plus nine when you, you multiply that out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it in this form and I'm going to add my four to both sides. And I'm gonna undo my square. So I'm going to square root. And when I square root this side and this side, that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm gonna get a plus or minus two, positive and negative when I take the square root, and then I'm gonna get an X minus three. And then I'm gonna add three to both sides. So I'm gonna get three plus or minus two equals X. And I'm gonna take three plus two, which is five, so that's gonna be one of my X's. Three my, minus two, which is one, that's gonna be my other X. So my X intercepts are gonna be five comma zero and one comma zero. Again, I personally would not have foiled this out or multiplied this out. I would have added the four. When I take the square root of both sides, I need to get a positive and a negative on this side. Now, my y-intercept, for my y-intercept, I am going to put zero in for my x. So it's g of x, but I'm just gonna go y equal zero minus three squared minus four. So y is equal to negative three squared minus four. So I'm gonna get nine minus four or five. Now remember, this is zero comma five. Okay, and that's gonna be my y-intercept. Okay. So now I'm gonna give us as our second example, one that is in a different form. So let's say my second example um, is going to be f of x is equal to, let's say I have x squared minus 6x plus 5. Now this one is in what we call standard form. Okay, this is standard form. And from this form, I want you guys using this form to find the same three things, vertex, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. So let me just move this up for a sec. I'll move it back down. Um, so we wanna find our vertex, our x-intercepts, and our y-intercept. Okay, and again, we want to do it from this form so that we understand how to do it from this form. So in this form, the easiest thing to find is going to be 
my y-intercept. My y-intercept, if I highlight, my y-intercept is gonna be found right here. That's gonna give me my y-intercept, okay? Uh, because I'm really putting zero in for my x's. And when I do, I end up with five. I end up with zero comma five for my y-intercept. Again, putting zeros in for my x's. Now my x-intercepts, I'm gonna be putting zero in for f of x or my y. So I'm gonna have zero is equal to x squared minus six x plus five. I personally, I'm just gonna zoom in. I personally would factor this. I believe it's factorable. What multiplies to five and adds to negative six? Well, that's gonna be a negative one and a negative five. And I get X is equal to one and I get X is equal to five. And again, if this was not factorable, then maybe I complete the square or maybe I do quadratic formula, okay? But it was factorable. So my X intercepts are going to be one comma zero and five comma zero. Those are gonna be my X intercepts, okay? Again, to find my x intercepts, I put zero in for my y, which means f of x. For my y intercepts, I put zero in for my x's. Now, to find my vertex, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to average my x intercepts. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So my x-intercepts were one plus five. So I'm gonna add them together and divide by two. And so when I do, I get six over two, which is three. So this is gonna be three comma something. To find the something, I am going to take this three, which is my x-coordinate, and I'm gonna substitute it into this equation to get my y out. So I am going to go, so I'm really finding f of three is what I'm really doing. I'm putting three in for my x, okay? And so I'm gonna be getting three squared minus six times three plus five. I get nine minus 18 plus five. And when I do that math, I get a negative nine plus five or negative four. So I got three comma negative four. And that is my vertex. And again, if I have something in this form, I can find my x-intercepts, I can average my x-intercepts to get the x-coordinate of my vertex. That's how I got this three. Then I take that number, that x, I put it into my equation to get my y, okay? Now, last, one of these, and then I'm going to talk. Um, it's not our end of our notes. We're going to practice changing these from to different forms. But um, this example, let's say for this example that I have y is equal to x minus 5 x minus one, because sometimes we do see it in this form, okay, where we have our x, uh, our roots and we have to have to write an equation. So this one is in our factor form. And so when it's in this factored form, okay, I'm gonna move this up a little. When it's in this factored form, again, when I'm trying to find my vertex, my x-intercepts, my y-intercept, the easiest thing to find in factored form is going to be our x-intercepts, okay? So I'm gonna be getting my x-intercepts. This right here, what makes that zero? Well, that is going to be five. So I know I'm gonna have X 
equal five. And what makes this zero? Well, what makes that zero is X equal one. So I know that my X intercepts are going to be in this case, five comma zero and one comma zero. And again, I found them from my factors because what I'm really doing, I really probably should write this out. What I'm really doing <clears throat> is I am going zero equals X minus five times X minus one. This is giving me the five. This is giving me the one, okay? Now, just like the other problem, if I know my x-intercepts, I'm going to average my x-intercepts. So my x-intercepts were five plus one. I'm gonna add them and divide by two. I get six divided by two, which is three. I then take that three, I do the same idea as I did in the other problem. I'm gonna put the three in for my X's. So I'm gonna have Y is equal to three minus five times three minus one. So I get negative two times two, I get a negative four. So I get three comma negative four. To find my y-intercept, I am going to be putting in zero for my x's. So to find my y-intercept, I'm gonna go zero minus five, zero minus one. I'm going to get a negative five times a negative one, which is a positive five and I get zero comma five. Now, some of us, I think, recognize that every one of these problems I gave you resulted in the same x-intercepts, the same vertices, the same y-intercepts, because they're all the same equation. They're written in different forms, okay? And I did that on purpose to show you that in each of the cases, they end up giving you the same answer, even though they're in different forms, but maybe you're gonna look for it in a different way. So I'm just gonna jot down the fact that um, when I had, so all three were the same, same equation, but in different forms. I'm just gonna move this up. just going to jot down for us that all of these were the same equation, but in different forms. So we had y is equal to the quantity x um, x minus three squared minus four. And this I'm going to call vertex form. We had y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5, and that is standard form. And I had um, y is equal to x minus 5 times x minus 1. And this is in factored form. But all of these are equal. 
So all of these are the same equation, just in different form. Now, what we're gonna be dealing with from here on out on these notes is we're gonna start with this form and try to get it to be this form. That's gonna be our goal. Okay, we're gonna start with standard form, make it into vertex form. So our next set of notes, um, what we're going to be doing, let me just draw a line to separate. So what we're gonna do is for these ones, we are going to um, change from standard form to vertex form. By completing the square. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing in each of these. Okay, we're going to be going from standard form to vertex form. So first example, let's say we have y is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 1. Okay. I'm going to do it once doing the box method for completing the square, and then I'm going to do it how I normally do it for completing the square. Okay. So for this, when I'm doing this, generally what I do is this plus one is not making this into a perfect square. I'm going to minus the one to the other side. So I'm going to have a y minus one equals x squared plus. 6x. That's going to be my first step. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally show us how to do it in a box method where I take my x squared, I take my 6x here, and I'm going to split that 6x evenly here and here. So when I'm splitting 6x evenly to form a square, it's going to be a 3x and a 3x. And then my outside is going to be an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. Now, what you'll notice is I am missing this box right here. Over there, I have an x plus 6x, but I have an empty box here. What is going to go into that empty box? OK, it's going to be a 9. So that means what I'm going to do, let me just rewrite this. I'm going to have x squared plus 6x plus something. I'm going to also add that something onto the other side. And what I'm going to add to both sides is that 9, that 9. Now, myself personally, I don't draw out the box. What I do is I, I do the same process, but I take my B. My B in this problem is my six, the number in front of my X. I divide it by two, which I did. I split it to a three and a three. And then I square it. And that's how I get my nine. So I take my B, which is six. Six over two is three. Three squared is nine. So six over two is three. 3 times 3, 3 squared is 9. I'm doing the same process. I'm just not drawing it out. And that's why I got that 9 and 9. Then what I'm going to do is on this side, I'm going to have a y plus 8. So unlike when we do it and we're solving, we have a y over there. Does that make sense? We're not going to get a number answer. We're going to get a new equation. And this whole thing was a square. Here we see it as the x plus 3, x plus 3. Well, if I'm not drawing out my box, how do I see it? <clears throat> it's always half of your B. Half of my B is three. That's what goes here. Half of my B. Because 
these were half of my B. That's where I got that three. I'm gonna, can I zoom in on the equation part? Um, so then my next step is I am going to have Y equal X plus three squared, and then I'm gonna minus my eight. And that is our equation. And now I can identify my vertex as negative three comma negative eight. I can identify it, okay? Okay. So let's say I have y equal x squared minus 4x plus 3. And we want to do this one. So you guys try this one without me. Give us a couple minutes and I'm going to go over it. Okay. So when I'm doing this problem, okay. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to minus the three. It's not helping me. And then let me just kind of do this. I'm going to minus the, th the three. And then I know I'm going to add something to this side. And I'm going to add something to this side to make it into a perfect square, right? And so I'm going to do my B divided by two squared. So I'm going to take my negative four divided by two, which is a negative two. And then I'm gonna do a negative two squared, which is four. So I'm gonna add four here and I'm gonna add four here. I have to do it to both sides. Some of us are trying to do this without showing work. Show work, show work. So you don't lose numbers that you're saving here and there and you're trying to do too much at one time. Okay, so this side, is going to be a y plus one. This side is supposed to be a square. So I didn't draw my box, but again, it's going to be half of my b. My b is a negative four. If this is negative, this is going to be a minus here. But half of negative four is negative two. So this is going to be an x minus two. My last step, I'm going to minus one from both sides. So I get x minus two squared minus one. That's my equation and then my vertex, I'm just gonna put V for vertex, is gonna be two, negative one. Okay. The next one I'm gonna do is going to be y equal x squared minus three x minus five. Now, on these next ones, I'm gonna kind of run through them with us. Each of these is gonna have a slight little twist to it that to make it a little more complicated. So in this case, um, I'm gonna add the five to both sides. I know I'm gonna be adding something here and I'm gonna be adding something here. Now, in this case, what's going to happen is my B is a negative three. And when I take half of negative three, I get a decimal, or you can leave it as the fraction. I'm just going to do it as a decimal. Then I'm going to square this decimal or fraction, depending on how you have it, and I get a positive 2.25. So this is not going to be nice. If your B this out. If your B is odd, you are going to be getting either a fraction or a decimal, depending on how you want to write. Okay. So now on this side, I'm going to get Y plus 7.25 is equal to, and on this side, again, it's a square. And I'm gonna have a minus in between because there's a minus here. Remember, I took half of negative three and half of negative three is a negative 1.5. So I'm gonna have X minus 1.5. That's what's gonna go here. 
So on this, I'm going to have y is equal to x minus 1.5 squared minus 7.25. That's going to be our equation. And my vertex is going to be 1.5 comma negative 7.25. That's going to be our vertex. Okay. Go over one where maybe we have something else going on with it. Um, I'm going to skip to this one. I will be adding maybe a couple more examples onto the video for us that maybe I didn't get to in, in our class. I did get to in period one. So um, this one here was our example five in that class. Y is equal to two X squared plus 16 X plus 29. So on a problem like this, okay, I'll call this four. On a problem like this, first thing I'm going to do is I am going to minus the 29. Now, what I want you to notice is there's a two in front of our x squared. We don't like having a number in front of our x squared. We need to factor that number out. So I'm going to take this two, factor it out, and get x squared plus 8x. And then I am going to be adding something here to make this into a perfect square. Notice I didn't try to take the two here. Number one, it doesn't come nicely from a 29, but even if it did, just take this number to the other side and factor out of what's left over, which was my two X squared plus 16. Okay, let me just write Y minus 29. Okay, so now when I'm doing this, I am again going to take half of my B, B over two divided, B divided by two and square it. So my B is eight. Okay, I'm looking at my B here. This is where my B is, not in the original problem here. And I take half of eight, which is four. And four squared is 16. So I'm gonna add 16 here. What am I gonna add to the other side? No. What was that? 32, because do you see how there's a two in front that's timesing with it? So because that number is in front, this is really going to be a 32 that I'm adding. Okay, I really added a 32, two times 16. So now I'm going to have, now I'm going to have y plus three equals two times the quantity. And again, half of eight was four. So that's what's gonna go in here, X plus four. I'm going to minus my three. So I get X plus four squared minus three. And my vertex is going to be negative four, negative three. This was their example six. Y is equal to negative two X squared minus 12 X minus 83. I did do one in their class with just a negative in front. Okay, here's kind of a combination of it being a negative number. So in this one, I am gonna add 83. Sorry, that's a 23, not an 83. I'm going to, that's a 23. I'm going to add 23 to both sides. And I get negative 2x squared minus 12x. I'm going to move this up. Um, I am going to factor out my negative 2. And when I factor out a negative 2, I'm actually going to get a positive 6 here. Okay, I'm going to get a positive 6 here. And then I'm going to be adding something. 
going to spread this out a little bit more, a little more space. Now, when I do this, I'm going to take six. I'm going to divide it by two, which is three, because that's my B. Three squared is nine. So I'm going to put a nine in here. What am I going to do to the other side? What was that? Negative 18. I'm going to multiply that. That's going to be a negative 18. So I am going to get y plus 5 is equal to negative 2 times the quantity. And again, half of my 6 is 3. So this is going to become an x plus 3 squared. And then I'm going to minus my 5. And that's our equation. And my vertex is negative 3, negative 5. I'm going to write this one down for us, and I'm going to put it in the video but you might want to try this one on your own where you do y equal negative x squared minus 8x plus 15 and see if you can get that, okay? So on this problem where you have y equal negative x squared minus 8x plus 15, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 15 from both sides. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative from my x squared and my 8x. So it becomes a positive x squared and a positive 8x. And then I need to take my b, which is 8, take half of it, which is 4. I square that, 16. That's what I'm going to put in this parenthesis. I then am going to multiply that with that negative in front. And so instead of it being plus 16, it's going to be a minus 16 on this side. And so I'm going to have y minus 31 is equal to negative times the quantity. Half of 8 is 4. So I get x plus 4 squared. I then am going to add my 31. And that's our equation and our vertex is going to be negative 4 31. 